G'day folks, it's Rob here, and in today's video we're going to be talking about these fellas feeding behind me here. They're not necessarily our jade perch, but just fish in general when it comes to aquaponics. Now over the years I've answered loads of questions on fish in aquaponics and created frequently asked questions or Q&A videos. In today's video we're going to be compiling some of the best questions and I'll be adding in a couple of answers to some other frequently asked questions to do with fish in aquaponics as well. So I'll stop rabbiting on and we'll hook into the questions. So one of the most common questions I get, in fact I've answered it twice today, is Rob what fish do I use in my aquaponics? Now there's two main choices, you have got table fish and you have got some ornamentals and more about them, uh, the ornamentals, later on in this video in another question. As for uh, which would be best for you table fish wise, well that depends on your climate and also the laws in the area where you live. For instance, here in Queensland, Australia, very illegal to keep tilapia. So even though it's one of the number one table fish around the world, we cannot grow them here in Queensland. In fact, if we get caught taking them out of the rivers and not disposing of them properly, there is also huge fines. But we can grow a load of native species that can handle the warm weather rather well. Things like the Tandanus catfish, we've got one in our sum tank. The jade perch, they handle warm weather. The barramundi really do like warm water. Uh, they tend to die off when the water temperature drops a little bit, around about the 16 to 14 degree range you can start to have fish losses if the temperature falls suddenly so not something we can grow all year round but definitely something we can grow through summer here whereas the jade perch we can grow all year round along with the silver perch there's also things like your sleepy cods they really don't mind a little bit of warm water either as for the cooler southern states a lot of those folks will use things like silver perch and through the cooler months they tend to grow trout Rainbow is very popular, so is Golden and a few other varieties of trout. Redfin, where it's legal in Victoria, illegal in New South Wales. That's pretty much all what's on offer here in Australia. I mean, there are a few others like the Murray Cod, um, but they're generally a little bit slower growing. Now you folks over in the States, you're spoiled for choice. Uh, you've got your tilapias, which are um, not legal in every state and every jurisdiction. Cooler areas, I've seen salmon being used in some commercial operations, and there are a few other native species. Jack Spirico uses sunfish, I believe they're called. I'm not really familiar with them. There are a few different catfish that you can also use there as well. Sturgeon, I've heard of people using sturgeon as well. Carp is also an option. In some places, it is legal to use in your aquaponics, along with your ornamentals, which we'll talk about later on. In saying all that, of course it depends on your climate. You can bend the rules a bit like Michael with his catfish in the northeast. He has them inside and the grow area outside. Uh, even Owen here in Queensland, Australia, he has all his aquaculture in the garage. He's got a bit of heating in there and he's able to keep his barramundi on the feed all through winter. So there are ways you can bend the rules um, by altering your microclimate within your system and on your property to get fish to grow all through the season. So um, all that being said, yeah, anyone who asks me what fish um, should I use in the aquaponics there, there's a long, long list no matter where you live. It all just depends on how dedicated you want to be to um, changing the environment they live in and also to what is legally available in a lot of the cases. So I hope that helps you out. Now I'm um, off to the first Q&A question from uh, one of the previous videos. Uh, so first off the bat, uh, is there any reason you only ever have fish of all the same size in your tank and can you not introduce fi uh, fingerlings um, with different maturity fish and um, so you can have a continual supply of nitrite or sorry nitrate in the system hopefully no nitrate um, yes you can um, set it up so you can introduce uh, fish of different sizes into the system one thing you do need to um, keep in mind though there are some species that will predate on smaller fish of their own variety such as trout and barramundi in particular the main reason i don't do it is because we buy our fish in batches minimum order from most places is 25 fish and once i get 25 fish in there that's pretty much all going to see me through when i harvest them probably down to around about 10 fish and then harvest those last 10 fish there is a large bank of nutrients built up in the beds so i don't really have to worry about getting fish in there straight away um, for, so the plants can be well fed as long as i keep up the supplements um, yeah all should be fine because there'll be a load of nitrate in there and then i can just add my fingerlings in 
and then over time as the feed increases more um, nitrate will be added. There's no reason why you can't have two tanks in the system like our old system. I had two 1000 litre or 260 gallon fish tanks. The idea was to rotate them as some were coming to maturity have another batch in another tank uh, but that, we just didn't get around to that. We ended up renovating the house and we ended up with the system we got at the moment for the time being. Um, another thing you can do is actually make a little basket that you can keep your fingerlings in within the same tank until they get large enough that the other fish won't predate on them and then add them into the tank. So that's one thing you can do. Something to keep in mind though, when it comes to harvesting, if you want just the large fish out of there, it's gonna be a bit of a challenge just to get a large fish out. Even from the existing 25 you may start off with without adding any in. Um, some will always grow faster than others. So it can be a bit of an issue. The only way I can really see around that is um, maybe having to um, drain down the water in the tank and then just trying to actively select one large fish at a time. Um, another idea might be, I've seen some people um, start to actually use a fishing line with a hook just to pull one fish out so you don't stress the other fish in the tank and you'll generally find the larger fish will hit the feed first so um, that might be something to consider. Not a method I've used myself. So before we get on to the next question I just wanted to take a few seconds out to say thank you very much to all you folks who over the years have been leaving comments down below in the comment sections of these videos and I also really like to say g'day to you and chat about your systems like Joe. G'day Joe. Hope you're having a good one mate. Uh, also too, if you can share helpful videos around or videos you think are helpful on your social media groups, your aquaponics groups and things like that, I really would appreciate it. It sort of helps boost me up in the algorithm and keeps the channel ticking along. And lastly, I want to thank those awesome folks who are supporting us through their YouTube membership program and our patron website farm your own yard almost forgot the name of it thank you very much oh and lastly thank you very much to those folks who have purchased our guide uh, there is a link down below if you want to see what it's about it's a backyard aquaponics beginners guide fully online and interactive 1995 us that's enough of that on to the next question first of all we have steven uh, how do you deal when the fish lay eggs in the system that is really not an issue for us here in australia because our native species don't tend to reproduce in um, small little backyard systems. I have heard legends of that happening in larger commercial ones, just what people have said on forums and whatnot. I do know that you folks over in the States uh, who grow with tilapia quite often will find little fingerlings um, floating around the place. People that I have seen in the States who breed their fish tend to get a breeding couple and they'll put them in a aquarium off to one side. The females will mouth brood and then they um, collect those fry, rear them up a little bit larger and then pop them in the system. The folks I've seen who do that tend to rotate their fish fairly quickly. I'm quite happy to let ours grow well over a kilogram or two pounds here. Whereas um, a lot of those folks will try and get them out around about the pound mark. And that way they've always got a certain size fish going through their systems. Uh, for folks who um, it just happens in their system, I know they've turned up under raft beds, they've turned up in radial flow settlers, um, all sorts of places in some tanks. So it's just one of those things. Certain species will do it, others won't. So I hope that helps. If you are interested as well in seeing how the um, Aussie fish uh, bred, uh, the jade perch in particular, I went up and saw the perch man, Bruce, and I'll leave a link uh, below this video and you can suss out how our jade perch uh, uh, bred. So he can sell them to the domestic market here in commercial quantities overseas. So I find all that stuff very interesting and I hope to do a uh, bit of a catch up with Bruce again and bring that to YouTube as well. Warren E actually asked the same thing. Do the fish breed or do you always have to water them? I should order. Yes, I do need to water in uh, fish. And yeah, as I said before, Aussie fish, check out Bruce's video. Solar MX6. G'day Rob. Can you recommend a low maintenance fish for growers that want to focus on vigorous plant growth and not necessarily meat? Um, well, my go-to here in Australia, because it sort of depends on where you are as well, um, but my go-to here in Australia is pretty much all carp. Um, carp species includes goldfish and koi if you're in the southern states. Uh, they can handle the cooler temperatures as well as the more extreme ones to a point. Um, so yeah, they're, they're a great little fish. Those fish are definitely feasible and will grow fast. Uh, in saying that, I do know people have just kept barramundi um, and other native fish, barra up north in Queensland that is, not in Melbourne or Tasmania. They've kept native Australian species, even though they don't eat them and they donate them to family and friends who do partake of the odd fish here or there. 
there. So that could be something to look into. The other thing is if you want to go for a smaller system, you could do, use just normal ornamental fish, things like guppies, gudgeons, um, firetail gudgeons, are a good one for little aquariums here in Australia. Rainbow fish, rainbow fish is another good one. Pacific blue eyes here in Australia, um, they're another good one. If you're looking at a smaller system, you could pack a fair amount of fish in there and um, fairly easy maintenance wise, fairly hardy. Uh, best thing to do, I suppose, would really be inquire at your aquarium for your local climate and conditions and see what they recommend. Just explain to them that you're a nutty aquaponicist and you're trying to grow some plants with some fish poop and um, yeah, see what they recommend. Oh, Bianca's just mentioned, watch the size of your pump and how you design the system. Very true. If you have the pump in the fish tank and you've got tiny wee bitty fish, you're going to end up with fish all through your system. So yeah, you might want to look at um, some sort of a filter over the front. We found gudgeons in the radial flow settler that were in the sump tank. Anyway, uh, that's a different story. So I just popped in a little bit more feed for these jade perch of ours, make sure they got full bellies. Uh, one question I have had a bit uh, pertains to the chop and flip barrel system that I made a couple of years ago. And you can check out that little video up there if you want to learn more about it. But a lot of people have asked me how many uh, fish that will grow to the size of these guys, about uh, one pound or 500 grams, can I put in that little barrel system? And I've got to tell you that the answer is zilch. I wouldn't put any table fish in a barrel system of that size. What I would do is I would stock it with ornamental fish, say some guppies or gudgeons or rainbow fish, something along those lines, even mollies, and run the system on ornamental style fish. I know a load of people who have made similar systems and they just run them on goldfish and you know they manage to grow a load of healthy plants just using small fish like that. Now off to the last segment which is more a bit of a statement than an actual question itself and it's something I've seen pop up a lot on social media and it's also been said below my videos at times and that is basically that you can grow all the food you need in your system to um, give to your fish who are feeding at the moment and that will provide them all the nutrients they need to grow. So while you can grow duckweed and azolla in your aquaponic system to feed to the fish, uh, there's a little bit of an issue with the nutrients, um, overall nutrient level in the system. I suppose the best way to explain it is, well, if you're growing um, using some nutrients that has come from the fish to put into the duckweed, and then popped back into the fish, basically they're recycling nutrients within that loop. Now the problem occurs when those fish start to grow and metabolizing some of those elements from the duckweed into their own body. Not only that, you're growing vegetables. Uh, you harvest a veggie, you then eat the veggie, those nutrients are not in the system anymore. So basically you're ending up with a nutrient defici deficiency within the system. Now I'm not against um, feeding your fish alternate fish feeds like azolla or duckweed, I think it's fantastic. We've even thrown in some um, lettuce greens and other greens from the system that we've grown in there into the fish just to give them a bit of a variation on the diet. Um, but the best way to go about it is to grow your azolla and your duckweed in little ponds or tubs outside the system using nutrients from outside they then grow you pop that in the system the duck uh, the ducks the fish then smash them or you could use ducks if you want to do quack ponics uh, the fish then smash through that uh, assimilate the nutrients excrete the waste and then it goes on to the plant so that is a completely viable way to do it. When I set up our duckweed and azolla tubs, what I used was water from the aquaponic system because I knew it would be nutrient rich. And then basically a little bit of compost every now and then just to sit in the bottom. And that provided enough elements to be dissolved in the water for the plants to take up. That's one method you could use. Uh, other things you could do is actually grow a specific garden maybe if you're interested in getting some more external nutrients in. Things like purslane, very high in omega-3. Um, we've even grown it for ourselves to eat. You can get a commercial variety which I think is called golden purslane. Uh, very large leaves on them. We actually get it growing, the smaller variety growing as a weed here. And I have ripped off um, bits and thrown it in the system for the fish before. And yeah, they seem to, um, once they work out that it's food, uh, they seem to hoe through it fairly quickly. I've thrown uh, moringa leaves in with some previous jade perch and they ate them. Now there are other options as well, uh, things you can grow at home or raise at home that you can feed them to bring some external nutrients in and cut the food bill. Uh, that's things like black soldier fly larvae, some fish will take to them straight away. Our original jade perch would eat them and then spit them out for us to collect on the base of the tank. 
but I have heard of some people that will freeze them, then chop them into sections, more like a pellet size, throw that in for the fish, and they tend to, um, yeah, hook into them straight away. And after a while, they actually weeden them on to the um, whole black soldier fly larvae. Keep in mind, that's the jade perch. They seem to be a little bit particular about them for whatever reason. Uh, other species, I've heard um, tilapia will hit them straight away, and also things like catfish and carp as well. So uh, that's something to keep in mind. I'm just worried about getting splashed here again. Um, so that's the black soldier fly larvae. Other composters, things like compost worms, they can be tossed into the tank. We've thrown compost worms in before, and um, the, both the silver perch and the jade perch smash through them fairly well. Things like mealworms. Mealworms are something we've raised primarily for the butcher birds that we feed on the deck at the moment, and the magpies. But we've also thrown some in for the fish, and they don't tend to last very long in the tank at all. And again, it's a high protein source coming from outside the system, um, giving them, you know, those extra nutrients. And something we've wanted to try but haven't quite uh, got the setup for it is growing crickets. Uh, these guys absolutely love grasshoppers we've collected from around the patch, uh, but crickets would be an easy way to farm uh, a little insect like that and then have a daily ration that you feed to the aquaponics. Uh, we're just a little bit hesitant because once those little uh, fellas get out, uh, they can make a mess. I've been in many a pet stores that are in, uh, infested with crickets uh, because someone's opened up one of the lids for the reptile food. One thing I would recommend though is you look into the diet requirements of the fish either through university sites or maybe um, aquaculture sites and just see what they, they prefer. Do that research first and then you can probably narrow it down to what you can produce at home but by no means are you limited to just the commercial feed. I do think it makes a good backbone though because it is made and formulated to have all the elements that the fish require. Unfortunately not everything for the plants but definitely everything for the fish. I do hope that's helped a few of you folks out there who are curious about um, alternate food sources. So that's by no means all the questions I've got about fish in aquaponics over the years but just a select few of them. I will come back and I'll look at this subject again down the line and we'll try and answer all the fish questions in just one Q&A video. Hey make things a lot easier and easier to search on YouTube as well. So that's something we'll do down the line. I would like to thank you again. I know I already have for you know all you folks who come around, stick to the end of the videos and say good day down in the comments section. Always love interacting with you guys. Don't forget to check out the uh, Backyard Aquaponics video beginner's guide if you're looking for a little bit more information on starting out your own system. But I will pretty much all leave it there. I do hope you're all well and happy in your own systems and gardens are booming and I'll catch you next video. Cheers folks and happy growing.